This is an introduction to the interface that goes between the Revolution receiver and two servos. The servos are operated by the standard Revolution transmitter utilizing the six auxiliary buttons that are normally used to control things like switch motors, uh, sound, a smoke unit, and so on. Buttons 1, 2, and 3 control servo number 1, which happens to be on the right. Buttons 4, 5, and 6 control servo number 2, which is on the left. If I hold button 1 down on the transmitter, you see that the arm on the servo rotates counterclockwise to the left, if I hold the third button, button number three, it will rotate clockwise to the right in this case. And you may know that servos can rotate about 180 degrees. Uh, it is possible to limit how far they're going to go uh, with this system. And if you press number two, it immediately returns the servo to a center position. And in a similar manner, button number four rotates servo number two to the left, button six moves it to the right, and button five centers it. In order to configure the operation of the two servos, we use a second remote control because the Aristocraft remote control just doesn't have the capability and the flexibility to do a proper job of programming this. I'm using a standard television remote control that has a number of buttons on it. And in order to start the configuration, there's a button labeled return. I'm going to point the remote at the interface, hold the button down, and you may notice that the LED, the green LED on the interface stopped flashing and it's fairly solid now. And if I want to adjust the leftmost uh, position of servo number one, I press number one and you'll see that the servo immediately moved to its leftmost position and I can use the volume buttons, that would be volume up and volume down to select a new position. Let's set that at about 11 o'clock. When you're done you press the menu button which is right in the middle of those cursor keys and let's do the same with number three. That's the rightmost position of servo one and I'll bring that one back till it's about at two o'clock out there, press the menu button. And similarly, 4, 5, and 6 can be used to control the other servo. 4 sets the leftmost position of that one. 6, the rightmost position. And 2 and 5 can be used to set where you want the middle to be. Okay, when you're all finished, press the power button and what that does is to write those settings to memory and from that point on when you press number one on the transmitter you'll see that the orange marker on servo one is still moving to the left but it stops when it gets to our preset limit if I press number three it's going to move to the right until it hits its preset limit and of course number two brings it back to the middle number four Move servo number two to the left, number five takes it back to the center, and number six takes it to the right to its preset limit. And then back to the middle. Now for most users, the setup that we've done so far is probably sufficient, but in some cases it might be nice to have the arm of one or both of the servos go rapidly to its limit left or its limit right. In order to change that behavior, again we're going to use the TV remote control. I'll hit the return button, get its attention, and button seven controls the behavior of servo number one and button eight controls the behavior of servo number two. Let's just try it with servo number one. I'm going to press number seven and once I do that, you'll see the LEDs flashing a little bit. I'm going to type in uh, the number two. And what that tells it, and I'm going to hit power when I'm done, is that I want you to move rapidly to the limit when I press button one. So press button one and you see it move rapidly to its limit. I only had to press the button once. 
press button three, it goes rapidly to that limit. So if you had some sort of configuration on a live steam locomotive perhaps or other animation, you could easily set it to go rapidly one way or the other. And of course servo number two is still moving more slowly to the left and to the right. There's one other configuration uh, option I'd like to show you. You may have noticed when I was operating the, uh, the servos earlier that the second servo, this one here, seemed to move much more rapidly than the other one. That's because of an option that I had set. If again you hit the remote control, get the attention of the unit, option 9, uh, control servo 1, and option 0, servo 2, we're going to hit 0, and we're going to type in uh, the number 5, which is kind of in the middle of the range. And what that says is when I press one of the buttons on the revolution, I don't want you to start moving right away. Notice it's going very, very slowly and then faster, much uh, more similarly to the way Servo 1 was operating before. So you can change how long you have to hold a button down before it moves rapidly, which comes in very handy. Here's another example of the type of thing that you can do with the interface to the revolution receiver. If you have a track side revolution, for example, and you're using it to control track power, you've got those six auxiliary outputs that can be used to control other servos. Uh, the servo on the left is connected to a sample of what you might do for a, uh, a nozzle from a water tower, and the one on the right is connected to a little prairie dog just as an example of another animation. If I press button number one, you'll see the nozzle goes the whole way up. If I press button number three, it goes the whole way down. And you may remember the two puts it in the middle. Probably a little bit faster than we want, but one and three do a good job with that nozzle. And if you keep an eye on the little prairie dog, if I press number one, you see he disappears into his hole. Press number six, here he comes back up again. And if I press number two, he goes down to the middle and again into his hole and back out again. 